one of the latest brands to enter the astronomy consumer market in recent years is Sfiboni. With their low prices and a decent quality, they offer some very interesting options, at least on paper that is. So hit that like button and subscribe and let's see together if this really is the case when looking at the 8 to 24 mm one and a quarter inch zoom eyepiece. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. Sfiboni is a new Chinese brand for eyepieces, telescopes and all sorts of accessories that only in recent years spread to the US and European market. Their focus lies on good affordable products and great consumer service. To test this, we are going to take a deeper look at one of their more popular eyepieces, the SV171 aka 8-24mm zoom. They have graciously sent me this eyepiece to review and I want to thank them for this. The 8-24mm version I have with me today comes with a design featuring seven multi-coated lenses in four groups, allowing for an eye relief that starts at 19.5mm and then decreases to 18mm as you increase the focal length. The apparent field of view behaves similarly, going from 56 degrees down to only 38 degrees for the 24 mm focal length setting, which doesn't sound that good. But I'll get into this and the actual viewing experience in just a moment. The housing is colored black and made completely out of aluminum. This eyepiece also weighs 309 grams and features a one and a quarter inch wide barrel with threading on the inside to enable the use of astronomical filters. Moving towards the middle of the eyepiece, we find a nice rubber grip ring and the focal length selector, which allows you to select the desired focal length by twisting the middle part of the eyepiece. The motion is smooth and is done in a stepless way, so no click stop here like on the Hyperion Mark IV from Bader Planetarium. On the other end, we have a nice rubber eye guard that features a smooth twist in mechanism, which I really enjoy. The diameter of the top lens is a comfortable 29 mm. So on paper, this eyepiece sounds pretty decent considering its price point of not even 60 US dollars. But I'm sure you are very interested in the actual viewing experience with this eyepiece as well. I've been using this eyepiece for the last three weeks and during this time, I had the chance to test it on multiple occasions. I used it in combination with both my 12-inch ProDub and my 4-inch Mac. All observations were done from my backyard under Bortle 4 skies with above average seeing conditions. In terms of optics, this eyepiece is surprisingly decent, especially when you factor in its price point. The lenses are fully multi-coated and offer good contrast and brightness levels. The field of view even if narrow on the 24 mm setting, is sharp right up to the edge, and this goes for any focal length setting. It's also very flat, which I enjoy very much. The field of view is not only sharp, but also almost free of any aberrations, which is great. Talking about the field of view, I really need to stress this point that the longer the focal length is set to be, the narrower the apparent field of view becomes. So much so that with this eyepiece set to 24 mm, the amount of sky you can see is very small. We are talking about only 38 degrees of apparent field of view. Here is a simulation of what that looks like. You typically use a long focal length eyepiece when you are trying to observe at a lower magnification so that you can see a larger area of the night sky. Having a narrow apparent field of view on the longest focal length setting works directly against this. This is however a limitation imposed by the zoom eyepiece design and almost all zoom eyepieces on the market suffer from it. 
at the other end of the focal length range. The apparent field of view with its 56 degrees is perfectly fine. The 8 mm setting will be primarily used for planetary observations and since planets appear small in your field of view anyway, 56 degrees is more than enough for these situations. I did enjoy observing Saturn and Jupiter with this eyepiece very much. The party piece of the zoom eyepiece, or any zoom eyepiece for that matter, is the ability to zoom in and out by manually changing the focal length. While the zoom eyepiece from Siboni allows you to do this, I feel that they could have done a better job at designing this feature. Let me explain. When trying to twist the ring in order to change the focal length, you grab the moving part of the eyepiece with one hand and with the other hand you hold on to the fixed part of the eyepiece. Then you start turning the focal length selector ring. The problem that I'm having here is that the moving part of the eyepiece, the focal length selector, makes up almost the entire body of the eyepiece. So I'm left holding the eyepiece either by the bottom part or by the eye guard. But since the eye guard also moves, this isn't really an option. So I end up holding the eyepiece at the bottom. The problem here is that as soon as I insert the eyepiece into the focuser or diagonal, this part isn't available anymore for me to grab. So the only solution is to tighten the locking screws of the focuser or the diagonal as best I can before manually changing the focal length of this eyepiece. This gets especially annoying if you are trying to zoom in while using a diagonal with a twisting eyepiece lock, like the prism diagonal from Bader Planetarium. In this case, when I try to zoom in, I only manage to twist the eyepiece lock of the diagonal and not the focal length selector of the eyepiece. To solve this, I need to tighten down the eyepiece lock of the diagonal really hard. If Sviboni could make the moving part of this eyepiece a bit smaller, then all these problems would go away. Maybe they are listening, so fingers crossed. And one more thing. As mentioned before, the focal length selector doesn't have a click-stop function, meaning that you always have to look at the eyepiece to check the focal length you are currently using. And this might be a bit tricky when it's dark outside and you don't have a torch with you. It might also be a problem when trying to use two of these eyepieces at the same time combined with a bino viewer, for example. In such cases, it's important to be able to set both eyepieces to the same focal length setting. So keep this in mind as well when debating whether to purchase this eyepiece. If, however, you can look over this design flaw. The zoom eyepiece from Siboni offers a decent viewing experience. The generous eye relief, the adjustable eye guard, and the large diameter of the top lens ensure a very comfortable viewing experience. This eyepiece is also very forgiving when it comes to eye positioning. Regardless of the angle and distance to the eyepiece, I never experienced aberrations like black spots or unwanted internal reflections. I've tested eyepieces costing eight times more that weren't this forgiving in this regard. So Sviboni did a good job here. So how does this zoom eyepiece from Sviboni compare to the Hyperion Mark IV from Bader Planetarium? In terms of image quality, I would say that there isn't a big difference between them, with the Sviboni delivering 90% of the image quality the Hyperion offers. The Hyperion is a bit brighter and offers marginally better contrast levels. Also, in terms of build quality, the Sviboni doesn't lag that far behind either. Sure, the Hyperion feels a bit more premium and offers a great compatibility with all sorts of powder accessories. But looking strictly at the eyepieces themselves, the Sviboni can hold its own in this category as well. As for the viewing experience, here you start to see the biggest differences between these two. 
The Hyperion, with its significantly wider apparent field of view and a much better focal length selector, is definitely the better choice here. Now, it's also important to factor in the costs as well when comparing these two eyepieces. Here the Sviboni, with a price tag of just 60 bucks, easily wins this category. And this leads me to the conclusion. The Zoom eyepiece from Sviboni really does offer great value for the money. Sure, it's not a premium eyepiece and it does come with some design flaws, but if you can live with the narrow apparent field of view at 24 mm and aren't bothered by the suboptimal focal length selector, then the 8 to 24 mm zoom eyepiece from Sviboni might be a pretty good choice. It definitely represents an upgrade over the standard eyepieces telescopes normally come with, and like any other eyepiece, it makes a great grab-and-go eyepiece for when you just don't want to carry your whole eyepiece collection with you. So yeah, these were my impressions of the 8 to 24 mm zoom eyepiece from Sviboni. And now I'm curious to see what you guys think about it and also about zoom eyepieces in general. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or feedback, then please leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.